Hello and welcome to Let's Play in the Space 2, Series 7, Episode 105. I'm JC Proton. We're picking up at turn 263. We're playing Horatio Standard Faction on Endless Difficulty. This is an endless duration game, which means it goes to turn 600, but we'll be done here probably in the next half dozen turns or so. On this episode, we're going to be invading five more Riftborn star systems. We're going to be invading at Orion, Scorpius, Farver, Chang, and Pisces. And we're going to have some fleet battles too. We're going to have a little fleet battle here uh, with this fleet at Pisces. And there's a small fleet over here at Chang. And there is uh, a carrier fight over here at Orion. And another carrier fight over here at HF. <clears throat> so we're going to be uh, we're going to be doing those fights. Um, the fleet that was inbound over here to EF, um, I attacked them, expecting them to retreat, and they did. Uh, but it said they were unable to retreat and they were destroyed. So that was super anticlimactic. <laughs> Yeah, I'll admit, I'm a little disappointed in that one. I was uh, really hoping uh, hoping to see a nice big fight there, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, so last turn, we invaded the last Vodiani star system at Kaikra. And this, uh, this colony ship that the Riftborn had sent is over here at Zane. Um... And I can't, I'm not able to attack. It's the same deal as uh, as this ship over here at Lahat, um, because is it one of these lodestone systems? Um, you can't attack them unless there's a hero on the fleet. So I, I literally I can't do anything about it. So we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with that. I don't know if if. if um, it won't declare them defeated even if I take all their star systems <clears throat> and then I don't know we'll see what happens maybe it'll extend the game beyond the point when I where I have um, <clears throat> support because um, we have this whole um, situation going on with our approval because we have 163 star systems, but our sis our population only support 100, uh, whatever, 63, we're over by 100. And uh, that means we have a minus 1,000 approval from over-colonization. So once these bonus right now, it's 1925 plus 1925 for uh, new colony rule. Um, once these expire, um, we're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> our, 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 our empire will fall apart. <clears throat> anyway, let's go ahead and rock through these messages, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do the turn here. Price increases for military ships. Yeah, prices are going up. You can see the uh, dust inflation is picking up. Luxury prices are picking up. Strategics are picking up even faster because I've been buying them. Um, I think I am going to go ahead and do one more last round of buying of everything, ex of all the strategics except for Hyperium. I think I will, I will do that. Um, let's see what we are building at this point. Imperators, frigates, cruisers... Since I'm not building any more siege ships, I have the titanium available to go ahead and build cruisers. Cruisers take some um, titanium to build five. No big deal. So this is uh, the fleets I'm building. And you see I'm, I'm switching over to emergency labor policy. Oh, see, it's already kicking in on some of the systems. Yeah, it's already kicking in. So... Okay, I hadn't really planned on the kicking in quite that quick, but apparently it is a thing. So I'm going to be switching all of these systems over that are currently building ships. I'm going to go ahead and switch them all over to emergency AI labor. 
um, or emergency labor policy, whatever it's called. And uh, our desk inflation is going to go way up then. <clears throat> Let's see, we got some terraforming happening. Got some basic infrastructure build out for industry on the new systems. We're upgrading a lot of populations into Horatio's. Doing, doing that stuff. Um, academy powers increased. Ground battle remains titanium. Yay! Growing more population. Lots and lots and lots. Horatio. Unfallen. Yusho. Nashast. I'll admit I'm being pretty sloppy about managing this now. I'm not really trying very hard to micromanage it. I just kind of want to rock through and <clears throat> get to the get across the finish line, man. Populations lost at the new systems. You know, I have enough Riftborn. I can go ahead and splice them. Oh, wait. I've already spliced them, haven't I? Haven't I? I have not. See, it's, it's flashing with a little plus sign. All right, we can go ahead and do it, man. Let's do it. So that'll improve all of our Horatio by... They'll be producing two science, two dust, two industry increase so an extra two industry dust and science so currently we're at so industry dust and science so this little 14 will go to 16 this 9 will go to 11 and this 5 will go to a 7 so here we go and that'll still leave us more than 50 so we'll still have the the wormhole <clears throat> advantage thing going on Boom, there we go. Look at that. Horatio are even more perfect now. <laughs> <coughs> All right, cool. Um, some populations are decreasing. Kappa is manipulating time on Geosar. Every Riftborn strives for balance. So in that spirit, we offer a proposal. Yeah, they want... They want peace. Or they, they, they at least want a, a cessation of hostilities, right? <laughs> Alright. Let's start, let's start with the fleet battles, man. Let's go ahead and do this. And, you know... I think I'm going to pull my punches a little bit. I want to have a little fun with these guys. So, let's see. They have three medium ships. Total of 13,000 attack, 2,000 defense, 21,000 hit points. Let's go with a smaller battle. Let's just go with, like, one carrier and one cruiser. So, that gives us an attack of... 21,000, defense of a little under 6, and about 130,000 hit points. So, we're still outgunning by a lot, but yeah, we're only attacking with 9 command points, and they have 9 command points, so it, it's a more even battle. <clears throat> You know what? We'll just do we'll just do a solo carrier. We'll just take him with We'll fight him with a solo carrier. We'll see how it goes. I mean, they are damaged after all. So All right, here we go. Um so I'll do repair and recover.
<laughs> Here we go. We'll see how this goes, man. <clears throat> That's some pretty intense missile action going on, man. <clears throat> Check the numbers and then we'll be watching scan mode without the missed shots. Hmm. So our fighters and bombers didn't really come into play there. It was just guns and beams. My hull plating absorbed quite a bit of damage. So they did have rail guns. A little bit of guns and missiles. <clears throat> So yeah, this is one of the carriers that has Oracalsic's uh, armor, which repairs you for um, kinetic damage that you take. So <clears throat> that looked like that was pretty effective. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right, let's take a look over here at uh, Fleet Battle at Chang. They just have two medium ships. Looks like it's a mix of kinetic and energy. I think a single carrier can probably handle that, right? <clears throat> and they'll do repair and recovery. I'm expecting to take some damage there.
Okay, again, uh, mostly beams, uh, some guns, the um, squadrons didn't really kick in there. Guess I'll watch it real quick. Okay, um, next fight. Uh, fight at Orion. 15 command points, including one carrier and three medium ships. <clears throat> They've got 12, thir I guess 13,000 attack, 4,500 defense, and A little over 60,000 hit points. If I tone this battle down, I could probably go two carriers, two cruisers, or maybe even just stack the bottom lane. <clears throat> I think that's what I'll do. I think I'm just going to stack the bottom lane and put everybody down in the bottom lane except for one sentry in the middle, and that way I'll at least get a big squadron uh, attack uh, on the top lane, which is probably where they're going to put their carrier. Okay, and we're going to go, I guess, full reserves. Yeah. Because we're not really going to take much damage here. So we're just going to stack everything down in the bottom lane. I figure their carrier is going to go in the top lane. Then we'll sacrifice this one small ship in the middle lane. Because you have to have a minimum of one command point in the middle lane. And so whatever's in lane two or three is going to get crushed by this big fleet with direct fire weapons and then lane one will only be engaged by the squadrons coming out of these three carriers and um so i'm guessing they'll put their carrier in the top lane and we'll see if i'm right or wrong <clears throat> They, they knew that's what I was going to be doing. So, hopefully it'll be cool, man. Hopefully we'll see some good fighter action here. Fighters and bombers. to the top lane. It's going to be a lull in the fight while the squadrons fly out there. Should be getting there soon. Here they come.
look, they have, yeah. There's the Ripborn fighters and bombers. Let's see how the math worked out on that one. Yeah, lots of bomber damage. Just a little bit of direct fire right here, and then that was it. And then everything else was bombers up in the top lane, which is where most of their fleet was. And they just did the missile weapon damage on the attack on the one ship that we had here. And then after that, I guess it looked like their bombers and fighter, their squadrons came down here and we just summarily wiped them out very quickly. Um, I think I kind of want to rewatch that a little from, from the top lane perspective. Maybe get a better visual on the... Um, on the squadron fight up here, I'm just gonna kind of skip to the end where where the where the um, where the squadrons get there. Although I do want to get a peek at the Riftborn squadrons. Let's go free camera. So, these are the usual Horatio fighters and bombers here, as we're used to seeing. And it looks like these are the Riftborn. That's what they look like. Hard to get a good look at them. There we go. Let's see uh, how this fight looks. All right, they're shooting at our fighters.
going pretty quick. We'll do the same thing, stack the bottom lane. Direct fire attacks on the bottom two lanes went really fast. Here we see the fighters and bombers squadrons passing each other. There's the Riftborn coming. Here come the uh, our squadrons. Let's see what happens here. <clears throat> Sorry again with the sniffling. Draw. We didn't take them down. Huh. Okay. Our uh, bombers were not able to do enough damage. Let's take a peek. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll we can finish them off uh, with a with another attack since we did repair and recover. 
or on whatever since we did uh, full reserves we'll, we'll finish them off um, oh, let's go ahead and just uh, rock out these attacks real quick here wrap up this recording I'm kind of short on time this morning um, so yeah just do the attack in Orion gorilla We'll occupy Orion. Orion looks like this nice five planet system, well developed. Microwave pipes, all kinds of cool cool things built. Attack at Scorpius. Gorilla, no defenders. Sixteen improvements will occupy. planet system with some good resources there pretty decent development okay Farver Microwave pipes. You hate, you hate to see those go. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Now let's see. Chang. No improvements destroyed. Cool. Protect system. Twenty five improvements? Man, we just walked into that place. That was great. Nice and well developed. Lots of cool stuff. All right, and let's do Pisces, man. and destruction only 10 improvements so not not a highly developed system three planets good choices though lots of industry type stuff is built okay Okay, so I guess off camera, I'll uh, I'll purchase some more of these. I'll probably buy some luxury resources. Um, I will shuffle around uh, these build queues for our planetary systems and make them. Everything that's building ships is going to switch over to this emergency labor policy. So my dust production will go way up. Right now, it's only at ninety thousand per turn. So that'll go up. I'm sure. Or it'll go I'm thinking 200,000 plus something like that I don't know we'll see so this is what we currently have in construction in our planetary build queues and I'll, uh, I'll also move up uh, battle fleets 
I'll get all of those that have just been produced uh, out of these systems back here. A bunch of fleets uh, produced, and uh, I'll get them heading on over here um, to GNY8, and then we'll move uh, battle fleets up to Yusul and Libra, and. Staters, I think I'll get them on the way. I don't think I'm going to be able to get there. Yeah, so it's going to take two turns. Oh, look at that. It's the the uh, held right click is now back to showing uh, my fleets. Cool. I um, mean, it, it shows the it shows the movement path with, with with estimated time of arrival. Okay, cool. It's back to working the way it's supposed to. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, next turn, it looks like we'll probably only be invading Yisl and Libra and uh, Genomos. Looks like uh, we need to take out. Civilian population, there we go. Yeah, we'll siege that down. So we'll, we'll, we'll invade three systems here. You can see I got a lot more battle fleet on the way to Genomos. And then we'll um, we'll get this set up. Uh, so we'll be wrapping up here and get this one set up. And I think I want to take a peek and see if it's actually doing the wormhole thing. So let's merge all of these together. Um, so it should only use about three movement when we go through this wormhole. Let's see, let me take one of these out. And he'll guard. And the others will all go through. And let's see if it uses all of the movement or only three movement. Should end up with, yep, there it is. See, it's only used three movement instead of all of it. It only used half the remaining movement. Okay, cool. So, yep, it's working. The, uh, the population bonus that the Riftborn give. That movement through wormholes only consumes half the remaining movement points instead of all of it. Cool. Okay, so that's uh, that's working as it's supposed to. Cool. So I'll do that other stuff off camera, and then uh, I'll see you guys uh, next time. And thank you for watching.